Welcome back to my YouTube channel, my friends. In today's video, I'm gonna be walking you guys through an off-season squat workout that I designed for myself and explaining the programming theory behind every single exercise and even down to some of the rep ranges and how I'm approaching this workout. Now, this workout is designed for either power builders or power lifters, really just some kind of hybrid athletes, but even bodybuilders who just like training a little bit heavier and using exercises like the heavy back squats in their training, this workout could be amazing for you if you have these two major problems. One is small and weak quads. And the second one, which really actually comes along um, with small and weak quads is tight hips, specifically your hip flexors, the psoas, the rec fem, and some of those other muscles down the interior portion of the hip. Now, what you want to understand with any workouts that you're approaching with an intermediate or advanced training in mind is long-term symmetry. So you might look at my physique and think, this guy doesn't have small and weak quads, which is true to an objective standard across the board of say some average person in the gym. But in relation to my own anthropometry and really how I've been training the last year, I've noticed my hips have started to surpass my quads in strength. And therefore my movement pattern in my squat has gotten a little too hip dominant for my liking. So to create symmetry, I decided that I needed to spend the next block or two focusing on my quad strength and size, as well as even ankle mobility and a few other things we're going to be touching on this in this video and fixing my super tight hips, which really causes problems with some of the quad muscles. Now let's actually get into the workout and start breaking down the theory behind everything I programmed. I started today off with what I call calm squat singles. All this means is basically a low arousal squat single done for decently heavy weights, but not quite near failure. It is worth mentioning this is block number one of a longer training cycle, and this is week number two. So I progressively get heavier both as the weeks go on as well as the whole training block goes on minus when I wave load and deload. Now, the reason I program calm squat singles or low arousal squat singles is because the CMS can get overly taxed anytime you use adrenaline or a lot of hype in your training. And if you guys have watched my channel before, you know I used to use way too much hype in my training. Don't flirt with him. I'm not going to... Ah, let's go! Oh. Now, I don't do that anymore unless I'm actually displaying strength. But when I'm going to build strength, especially in the off season, I wanna be able to incorporate some heavy squat work so my top end strength doesn't diminish while still focusing on hypertrophy and weak points. There's a reality that whenever you start focusing more, especially on hypertrophy, which is very demanding on recovery, oftentimes your top end strength actually starts to diminish. So I'm in that phase of training where I'm thinking more long-term, trying to build up the size and and baseline strength of some of my weaker muscle bellies and also improve my form. So that way, long-term, I can start to surpass my top end strength on squats. But while I do this, I wanna keep including some top end singles with low arousal in the training. So that way my top end strength on the squat doesn't diminish too poorly. And I can practice a slightly more quad dominant squat with something heavier in mind. Now, <clears throat> what you'll notice about my form on these squat singles is I'm going really deep really controlled. There's no hype at all. I'm even meditating a little bit before each squat single. And what I'm really trying to improve here is not just my um, you know, top end strength, but actually contributing a movement pattern that I want to build up over the course of these next training blocks into my movement here during this workout. So I'm actually squatting with a little bit more quad dominance than I have been by moving the knees more forward and out rather than hinging at the hips a little bit more like I've been doing in previous training blocks. And already it's starting to feel a little bit more normal again. Another amazing effect about including squat singles into your program, if you don't do them near failure and you have to be very careful with that, you actually feel stronger on your back downs, especially when you use low arousal. So I think the calm state hugely matters. If you hype up a ton for even a squat single at RP7, like I had on this day, it's gonna cause your performance afterwards to be degraded rather than improved. What I've really found with squat singles with low arousal is that after you get a post-activation potential 
vitiation effect, which is just a scientific term for basically you do something really heavy and then everything that's lighter after just feels easier. You'll know that you've done these squat singles too heavy if your work after actually feels more taxing and a lot harder as the workout goes on. Now, after the squat single done at RP7, I went on to do some back downs, but in this case, I'm opting for a close stance low bar squat. So this kind of meets in the middle of both worlds. Instead of doing some high bar or front squats, which is a little less specific, what I'm trying to do is target my quads in a manner that's still conducive to a low bar squat. Now there's no right way or wrong way to do this, but in this case, I just preferred to keep these low bar with a really close stance, which really does two things. It limits the amount of hip external rotation I'm getting as well as hip abduction. So that way I'm forced to use my ankles in a more forward knee position, eliciting a little bit more quad activation in this movement pattern. This also has the added benefit of producing a lot more demand on the core, which really does come into play whenever you're doing a more quaddy style squat. Now, what you have to understand is that you can't do these very fast or without position in mind, especially on the ascent of the squat. So you'll notice my control into the whole of the squat on these hugely matters. I'm not just moving as fast as possible to make the weight move a little quicker and easier. I'm really focused on my position, especially on the ascent, staying in the quads. Because when you stand this close, it is so easy to start falling out of position and just falling into a hip dominant style squat, even with a close stance. What we don't want to see is a lot of knee recession or hip recession out of the whole of the squat. So I'm doing these very controlled and in a way that probably elevates the RP on the back down sets a little bit, but it doesn't really matter because the weight is light enough. I forget the exact weight I used here. I want to say it was somewhere around 455 pounds. I'll be sure to put that on the screen, but I was doing multiple sets of four or five reps. Again, so sorry, I have forgotten off the top of my head, but the point here is I usually keep my back down sets somewhere between the three and six repetition ranges. Every once in a while, I might do some doubles, but I want these to be moderate reps, which is really going to build that baseline strength as well as some tissue adaptation. If you go to low reps, it's mostly a neurological adaptation. If you go to high reps, it's mostly a tissue adaptation because it's more volume and less load. I want to meet somewhere in the middle on these. Now, exercise number three after the squat single, as well as some back down close stance squat work. And it's worth noting, I did three total sets there for the back downs. Now I'm on to some front squat work on the slant board. So some people call these flat squats. And there's a million different names for it, but basically I have my heels extremely elevated on a 25 degree slant board, which is very steep. And I'm standing a lot closer stance than usual. And I'm using a front squat position with a slow control tempo. I believe I was doing 200 175 pounds. Again, I've forgotten because this workout was about two days ago when I'm filming this, but it was somewhere in that 275 pound range and notice the tempo. Again, there's this theme here of trying to maintain the forward knee position and the core activation I'm going for when I'm performing these movement patterns. Now, what you have to understand is when you have weak quads, if you're trying to not just improve your actual quad size, but improve your quad strength in the back squat, you have to think how do I train my quads specifically for a back squat? So leg extensions will definitely get your quads stronger and bigger, but in a non-specific way for power building or power lifting. In my case, I want to actually improve my back squats and also get some really jacked quads. This is an exercise that dramatizes or adds a more dramatic effect to your forward knee position because your knees move so much more forward and the range of motion is so much longer and you go so much deeper than usual. This is going to cause a ton of quad activation in a way that will actually be specific to a squat pattern rather than a leg extension, which really has no specificity to a squat pattern. Doesn't mean leg extensions aren't good. It's just not going to have the same strength effect. But I also, because of the tempo and the higher repetitions here, I believe I was doing sets of eight with a slight tempo, by the way, which increases the time under tension. What this allows us to do is improve quad size and strength relative to my power building goals or hybrid athlete, whatever you want to call it. Now, besides that, it's also worth noting this exercise really improves your connective tissues, which is very important as you get more advanced in your training years because the forward knee position is so dramatic and really I'm putting my knees in a slightly precarious position. You have to do this responsibly, but if you can do this the correct way, it'll actually improve connective tissue health rather than degrade it. So that way, when you're lifting heavier later on in your training cycle, your knee joint feels nice and healthy. Now, real quickly, those front squats, 
I did two sets of eight with a slight tempo. I believe I only filmed one of them, but rest assured I did. So that's actually six total sets of squat workout uh, or of a squatting style exercise in a row. Now we're moving on to something a little less specific. And exercise number four is probably the most hated exercise of all time, especially by my male athletes. In fact, I can't tell you how many memes I get from clients whenever I put this in their program, but Bulgarian split squats. However, the way I'm doing these is a little different. I'm not actually going for load here. I'm going for hip mobility. So my major focus is actually putting the back pad that my behind leg rests on as high as possible within the limits of my range of motion and mobility. Now, because I've been a little detrained and my quads and rec fem and, and different muscles on me got a little weak over the last few months as I was working on my other company, Unity, as I'm in this retraining phase, uh, my hips are really tight. And what I'm trying to do is actually lengthen that hip flexor, specifically the rectus femoris, which is one of the major uh, hip muscles. That's also a quad muscle, but it crosses at that hip joint. Uh, let me rephrase that. It's actually a quad muscle, but it crosses at the hip joint, which makes uh, your hips really tight if that muscle isn't trained as well as stretched under load. On top of that, you also have your psoas, which is uh, again, crossing the hip joint down into the deep core. And these muscles can get really tight. Bulgarian split squats not only loosen this up, but it has one other added benefit. You can see from the front view, my knee position is so forward and centered relative to my uh, foot angle compared to say my back squat where my knees open out to the sides far more because it's a bilateral exercise. Whenever you're doing a unilateral exercise like the Bulgarian split squat, your knee has to remain more or less stacked over your foot. You can't externally rotate or abduct your hip in the same way that you can in a bilateral back squat. And so this actually forces more internal rotation as well as quad activation. So it's a really great way to train that. And you get the added benefit of getting a little bit of glute action in there due to the split squat stance. Now, real quick, I got to insert a self-advertisement, but guys, I'm looking to take on 10 athletes here uh, for the remainder of this year, which is the biggest opening of coaching spaces I've literally ever had in my over decade coaching career. Now, what I'm really looking for are athletes and training Knees. Even if you don't compete in powerlifting, don't worry. You don't have to be some high level competitor to work with me. I'm looking for people who really want to transform themselves and want a coaching framework that's actually designed around personal transformation rather than just commodified coaching packages. I think a lot of coaching styles, which there's nothing against this, but they really just send you a program, do some technique review, tell you what to eat, and then they expect you to do all the results yourself. I'm not only going to do those things, but also focus on a framework that's designed around ensuring you execute these things and also change your lifestyle to match that of a high level athlete, even if you're not one, to get you the better results. I like showcasing this coaching style to clients. You can use the description box down below to sign up for a free meeting with me. I don't sell you on this meeting. I just show you what I'm offering. You decide after this call with no money, no pressure, nothing, if you want to invest in the coaching. I even send you my coaching prices and stuff after the call. I don't sell the coaching live on the website because we we get tons of people who apply or try to purchase our coaching every single week and it's not actually a fit for everyone because it is a very hands-on coaching system which sounds great and it is great but it really only fits certain people with certain mindsets so if you're interested please sign up down below okay exercise number five and really the last exercise i generally on leg days even in the off season i don't like doing more than five exercises in a workout because if you're actually putting full force effort into all of these exercises you just won't have have enough energy to do anything meaningful in my opinion after those five exercises and if you think you have more energy i mean could you still do something sure but you're probably not training as hard as you think on the before exercises so core work i'm currently training two to three times per week my core so what i'm doing on this day is targeting the hip flexors as well as the abs, which they really tie in together. So you're gonna notice I'm doing some hanging single limb knee raises with weight. So this is kind of the day I actually load my hip flexors, which helps decrease tightness there. The more you strengthen your hip flexors, like the rectus femoris, the psoas, and the different muscles that cross at the hip joint that cause us to bring the knees towards the chest, which is hip flexion, the better it's gonna get. The opposite action is what we do constantly, hip extension. We extend our hips in the squat and deadlift. We need also train hip flexion. And that's
that's really the method to the madness here is I'm actually training that under load as well as getting some nice abs in uh, the benefits of this. So I hope you guys enjoyed this workout. So my camera's dying. So unfortunately I'm gonna cut the video here. There was one other thing I wanted to say, but I'll save that for next week's video. Please leave a comment down below if you enjoyed this style of video because it actually lets me know this is what you wanna see because I really am here just to produce whatever you guys wanna see and learn about. And if you didn't like this video, feel free to give me some ideas on future videos that you'd like to see. Like, subscribe, do the whole nine yards. And as always, I'll catch you guys in the next video.